Hey everybody, Dr. Dave Marquis here and we're going to talk about autoimmunity today. Autoimmunity is really a broad topic because there's so many different named conditions that fall under that heading, but I'm going to address the commonalities so that you can kind of make sense of it and it's not such a, a foreign word. In a nutshell, autoimmunity simply means that members of your immune system, guys that are on your own team, are starting to work against your team and attack your body. That, that's it in its simplest form. So to take one step back from that and look at it in a, a slightly larger sense, you need to understand that the immune system has a hierarchy to it. And when I sit down with a patient, I always actually put up a couple of different slides to help people to understand that our immune system is orchestrated such that there's observers, and these are called T helper cells, and there's stimulators, there's suppressors, and there's regulators. I call the regulator the puppet master. And the job of those T helper cells are actually to call downstream to orchestrate what's going to happen next when they see something not going as they think it should go in the body. So when something invades your body, whether it be something you stick in your mouth, something that you breathe in, or something that punctures your body, your immune system is supposed to respond. And these T helper cells, they're supposed to engage. So the stimulator cell will generally engage in a rapid fashion to cause a rapid inflammatory response. And what it calls down to is this next group that we've all heard a lot about in the last couple of years called cytokines and interleukins. Cytokines and interleukins, those are big words that just mean immature white blood cells whose job is to go make a mess. And I like to think of these guys like young kids sitting on mom and dad's ankle while you're walking around the kitchen. And they just make you slower and bigger because they're holding on to you. And they're in the body, they're also called antigen presenting cells. Now an antigen is something that's foreign to your body. And so these cytokines and interleukins lock onto these things and make it a big mass so that they can present it to your actual immune cells, the immunoglobulins, whose job is to pull out a weapon and destroy the thing that they're looking at. And there's different members of the immunoglobulin family, and they call them immunoglobulin A, G, E, M. So they have these different letters, and each of them have different personalities. For example, when you're tested for a disease to see if you've had it in the past, you're going to do what's called an IgG test. And that gives you the past memory of something that you've been exposed to. Often I'll have patients come in and they'll tell me that I'm autoimmune with XYZ and I also carry all of these viruses and they'll show me that they've got Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus, parvovirus, uh, human herpes 6, you know, the HHV6 family. And I'll say, oh really? You're carrying all of those at once? Well, well, let's look at your labs. And we'll see that when they tested, you'll see the IgG, which is delayed memory, is really high. And their IgM, which is in action right now, that's a I'm dealing with it today type antibody, it's really low. And I'll say, well, no, you're not actually dealing with that right now because your IgM is low to zero, but your IgG is high, which means that you have a good memory of that. And you're probably exposed to another virus right now that your body has actually identified. And because it's now looking at that and mounting a response, every other memory of viruses that your body has seen before stands up and says, I'm ready too, I'm ready too. And so all of these immunoglobulins get ready to do their job, even though they might not be needed, but the immune system works as a, a collective in that sense. This works to our disadvantage in situations of autoimmunity, because the more inflammation that you have, and inflammation in this sense is antibody activity, so the more of those guys that get aggressively active, the more you feel crummy. So when the immune system mounts an aggressive offensive and you start feeling crummy, that's when you can turn on named autoimmune diseases. So starting from up here in the thyroid, you might have Hashimoto's, Cushing's, Graves. It could go out into the joints and become rheumatoid arthritis, 
uh, scleroderma, lupus. It can hit the intestinal tract and it can become Crohn's, colitis, celiac. You get the idea. It, it can kind of hit any tissue in the body, but the premise is the same. That just happened to be the weak link that got picked off. So the process by which autoimmunity starts ubiquitously, it starts with stress. When we mismanage stress, it causes an endocrine shift and our body gets ready for that offensive. It gets ready to mount a fight flight response. And sometimes we get stuck in that in life. Sometimes we stay in a fight flight state and because we're in that fight flight state, our gastrointestinal tract starts to change its function. And this is key because when you're under stress for a protracted period of time and you've got high glucose or insulin or cortisol or a combination of all three of those, your gastrointestinal lining literally becomes more porous. And when it's more porous, this layer of immune cells, all the ones that I already mentioned, they live underneath that lining and it's called gut associated lymphoid tissue. And they can literally have a meet and greet with other proteins that are coming down your pipe. So whatever you've consumed now potentially becomes problematic. And in the last 30 years, gosh, I have seen so much variety there where sometimes people become reactive to some of the fillers in their medications or supplements. Certainly to a, just about any type of food that you can consume, you can become reactive to it. Your body starts to pick off you because some of your body's function is getting biotransformed right in that same region. For example, why does thyroid happen to, why does autoimmune thyroid happen to like 70% of uh, hypothyroid cases? Well, it's because 80% of your T4 is converted to T3 between the liver and the intestines. So when you think of T4 getting converted to T3, well, that's an enzyme activity that's supposed to occur. This thing called thyroperoxidase. Well, Hashimoto's is when you have actually produced antibodies against that enzyme. So you have anti-thyroperoxidase antibodies, anti-TPO. And that's 80% of that is occurring right here so you know that if you have antibodies against that, well, it's happening right there. It's a thyroid problem that started right here in the gut. This is true of other tissues in the body. So much of it and so many of them are gut mediated. Then once you play kick the can, let's say you got Hashimoto's for say a decade. Hashimoto's causes a change in your body's ability to get active T3 into the cell because it's getting interrupted by this antibody activity. Well, when you don't have active T3 getting to all of the cells, other tissues start to suffer. So you get a slowing of the bowel. You, constipation is really common with hypothyroid. And when you experience that, now you can start to have secondary autoimmune diseases start to develop. And then the more that that develops, certain amino acid chains that are supposed to be getting conjugated and, and modified to, to help to repair joints, those too start getting picked off because they're available. They're in that same region where all this antibody activity is going on. And so the longer we play kick the can, the more autoimmune diseases we pick up, but they're really all the same. There's just what, what tissue is getting nailed. So the reverse of that has some truth. If you understand that, okay, Stress was my ubiquitous trigger. Well, it's kind of obvious. Tackle that stress and empower your body by understanding how to get your autonomic nervous system back to midline so that you're not always living in fight flight. Evaluate with your blood chemistry what your immune system's doing. If you're on that teeter-totter where your T helper cells are always in overdrive and they're always yelling downstream to have those cytokines on alert and creating inflammation, calm it down. That's where you want to know where your vitamin D, your glutathione, your nitric oxide are. These are things that you can measure, things that you can put into your body to help it re-regulate itself. Along that way, your immune system picked off a lot of common foods that didn't bother you when you were younger, but now they do. 
So you got to figure out what those are and remove them for a period of time so that your immune system on another level can calm down. And the more you can calm your system down, the more you start to walk away from that name tag autoimmunity. Sometimes it won't go away completely, but it's a rare patient where we can't turn the dial down enough where they can get their life back and drive the bus on their own and not be miserable. So realize that autoimmunity is not something scary. It's, it's a pain in the rear end if you're not addressing it appropriately and it can become something that's really problematic if you play kick the can and allow other autoimmune conditions to become secondary or tertiary to that primary one because then you got more to clean up. But as long as you're alive, you're motivated, and you're willing to make some changes, most people can turn around autoimmune inflammation and help their body to get back on track again. So I, I hope that kind of motivates you to take action today. As a functional medicine practitioner, my job is to educate you because knowledge is power. I don't live in your body. So I, I can't feel these things for you, but I can inform you and I can guide you and any qualified and functional med practitioner can do that. So I encourage you to seek out help if you're dealing with autoimmunity because life can get better. Have a great day.